strike, shoulder stretches, um, crossover stretch, mostly going to be posterior delt. You're just bringing the arm across, going to get triceps a little bit too potentially, um, but you're just trying to push backwards on the back of the elbow essentially. So it's pushing the hand towards the opposite shoulder. Should feel the stretch in through here. Um, we've got tabletop stretches. They're basically just the same as the range of motion ones. It's just you're holding the position at the end to try and get that more prolonged stretch, um, depending on what stretching technique you're using, how long you might hold that for. Um, we've got external rotation stretch using a doorway. Um, so we'll move the pulleys out of the way. And it's essentially just putting your arms up this way and then just leaning into it. It's going to get pec some too, but um, because I've got my arms up in textural rotation, it's going to be getting that as well. And again, depending on the patient's limitation, um, you can pick what would work the best for them. Um, um, we've got using a towel, um, a tabletop, sorry, we need table edge for extension. I showed you abduction, flexion, and um, external rotation already. The extension is just going to be kind of here um, and, and you can really kind of work forward this way to try and push the person into more hyper extension and then have them hold that position. You can either do it with the palm down or the palm up depending on what other muscles you're trying to kind of target with that one. Um, using the towel um, or a dowel for that matter to get our internal rotation, you're going to typically have the patient hold the towel like this, pull up with the top arm to try and get more internal rotation. Again, you could do the same thing with the dowel as well. Come up that way. Um, sleeper stretch. You're going to do that in sideline. Typically come right here. Um, we bring the arm like this, and then we're trying to push down um, on the forearm to come in that way and hold that position. Um, let's see, we've got our lat stretch, uh, manual lat stretch. I'll usually just hold on to my elbow and kind of lean my trunk away, get a good stretch coming through there. It's going to get your tricep a little bit too, but it definitely targets the lats and Terry's major a lot with that one. Um, you can also have the patient lie on their back without putting their shoes on the plinth <laughs> and bring the arms overhead and just kind of let them come back a little bit. Again, if you want to get more one side than the other, you can have them kind of twist um, into a little bit of trunk side bending to try and get one lat or the other. Did you see that? That was amazing. Um, <clears throat> wall stretch for the lats. Um, just coming up kind of to the wall, really. I would, I like doing it in a doorway and that way you can kind of walk your body underneath the door a little bit while you keep your hand on the wall and that way you can get kind of past neutral. But again, if you're doing it with most of your patients, they're probably going to be more limited than, than that. And then our kneeling stretch for the lats, um, basically just put your hands up on something stationary and kind of go into some more trunk flexion while the arms are being supported up to try and get those lats with that one. Um, pec stretch, we can do um, seated or supine. Supine basically just laying on table and really I'd probably bring them over so their arm is pretty free to go off the edge of the table and, and try and just let it dangle or hang either with elbow bent or straight to try and get that pec major on whichever side you're, you're trying to target with that one. Um, manual pec major using the wall is a good one. This is probably the most common way that I'll do it. Just put one arm on it, a support surface, and twist away. You can also do that doorway stretch that we showed for external rotation like this where you're leaning in. Again, also going to be a good one for the pecs. Kind of vary that humerus position when you're doing that one to target different portions of the, the muscle group there. Um, and then wand exercise. If I was doing wand exercise to stretch my pec, I'd probably grab it kind of wide and behind and try and kind of lift up a little bit and then maybe have them work their hands a little bit closer to try and get that um, a little bit more effectively.
All right, then we've got levator and upper traps, which we've gone over a bunch, so we're not going to cover that on the video. Been hanging out like this for hours. <laughs> look at that full extension. Pretty soon I'm going to look like Xander with the elbow. <laughs> Probably not. Um, so elbow stretches, we've got our extension one. If we're going to do pronation and supination with a low, low, long duration, something like this or a dumbbell, holding one end of the dumbbell, is a good way to do it. Um, again, you want to make sure that, that forearm has the ability to rotate fully whichever direction you're trying to improve, and you probably want the support to be fairly close to the joint when you're doing it also, so that they're not getting as much stress through the elbow um, up here. We're tr again trying to work on those radial ulnar joints with that one. Um, biceps and triceps stretches. Keep in mind both of those muscles are crossing the shoulder and the elbow. So if we're trying to really stretch them, we need to think about the actions that they do at both joints and do just the opposite. So if we look at biceps, you may add in that third motion because it helps with supination too. So we need to pronate it. We need to extend the elbow. We need to hyperextend the shoulder as well to get maximal stretch on that. Um, good way to get that, you can get them into this kind of position. Keep trying to scoot forward a little bit. Again, by being in that pronated position, it's going to target um, that bicep more than the other elbow flexors. Um, and then we've got to, again, take up the slack at the shoulder. When we look at the tricep, again, I'll usually bend the elbow fully, bring the shoulder up into as much flexion as I can, grab the back of the elbow by the olecranon, and then kind of keep pulling back. Um, if we're really just worrying about medial head and lateral head, then we really just need to focus on primarily the elbow flexion. But if we're trying to get long head, then we've got to get the shoulder um, up into more flexion as well to get that one. Um, low load, long duration for um, our triceps. Um, you can do it seated. If somebody's really tight back here, um, we can kind of have them lean their body weight into it a little bit to get that load as well. Again, you want to make sure that you're um, I guess you need to get them kind of trying to think of the most effective way to do it because we want to get them into some flexion as well at the shoulder, um, but also trying to increase the elbow flexion too um, with that one. Seated, arm on the table. Prone on elbows are just laying all the way flat, but again, we've got to think about trying to get the shoulder flexion too. We might need to think about that one a little bit more. Maybe I'll have Donnie Jim on. <laughs> um, pronation and supination manually or self since you can have the person grab their forearm and add into that twist stabilize the proximal segment and then just work on rotating the wrist either into more supination or into more pronation depending on which direction you need to work on so that's a pretty easy way to do it either have the patient do it themselves or you can do it to the patient um, our wrist flexors and wrist extensors, really easy to do manually. Just push on, if you're really trying to target just the wrist flexors and you wanna push on the palm, if we end up pushing on the fingers, then we're also gonna be getting either finger flexors or finger extensors. So if the goal is really things like flexor carpi ulnaris, flexor carpi radialis, then you wanna just push on the palm and you can let the fingers flex, um, but you're just trying to push back. Really good to get the person's weight through it and they can lean into it this way to try and stretch those. If you're trying to get the extensors, they can put their wrist this way and start trying to lean back a little bit more so that they can target those muscles. Manually, without using a brace, they can just push on the back of the hand here to try and target those muscles. Um, all right, hand stretches. Um, if we're gonna work on the fingers, then we do wanna push the wrist into extension, and then push the fingers into extension. If you're trying to isolate certain joints, then just do that. Push at the joint you're trying to localize the force at. But again, keep in mind that the, all those finger flexors are gonna go through the palm, cross the wrist, so we need to think about that wrist position too. Same thing with the extensors. If I'm trying to work on stretching those extensors, then I need to flex all those different joints to try and maximize the amount of stretch that I'm going to get um, on something like extensor digitorum that's going all the way out to the, to the last joint in the fingers. Um, 
We've got some other wrist flexion stretches. Um, we've got our an, an extension. You can do what's called a prayer stretch, essentially like this, or the reverse prayer stretch, kind of like this, pushing up, depending on if we're trying to get the flexor side or the extensor side. So that can be a, a nice one too. Um, full fist stretch with the wrist flex. This is gonna, you're gonna really feel this on the extensors, make that fist and then try and flex under. Um, definitely gets a lot through the wrist as well as extensor digitorum. Um, all right, intrinsic self stretches, lumbricals. You gotta think about all the actions that the lumbricals do. So we've got that kind of tabletop position. So we need to reverse that. We need to, instead of being in flexion at the MCPs, we need to be in extension. And then instead of being extended at the, at the IPs, we need to be in flexion. So you're essentially getting them in that kind of position and then try and crank them back into even more extension at the MCPs to try and kind of get that, those lumbricals stretched. Um, so a little tricky on that one. Our inner OCI stretch, um, we can only bring our fingers so close together. So the primary one there is just gonna be working on trying to sp splay the fingers apart. Um, and you can use a number of different things to try and just separate those, those digits individually. Um, and then adductor pollicis, again, same kind of thing on the thumb, just trying to push against the, the bones to try and create more abduction um, of that joint at the thumb.